The year 1861 did not begin well for Queen Victoria's family. Throughout the winter, Prince Albert had been afflicted by a myriad of ailments, most of which, unsurprisingly considering his heavy schedule of engagements, were attributed to nervous exhaustion. From the moment he married, the prince had devoted himself completely to the Queen and the country, one of his greatest achievements being the incredible Great Exhibition of 1851. In the decades since then, his workload had increased, and by February 1861 he was saddled with another burden, the knowledge that Victoria's mother, the Duchess of Kent, was suffering from cancer. To spare the Queen's feelings, Albert kept the news from her, but by mid-March it was clear that the Duchess was dying. The Queen and Prince rushed to Frogmore to be at her side, and when she died on the 16th of March, Queen Victoria fell into a state of extreme and excessive grief, inspired partly, no doubt, by guilt for their years of estrangement immediately following Victoria's accession. It fell to Albert to take care of everything, and as the year progressed, the deterioration in his own health passed largely unnoticed. So great was the Queen's grief that Albert felt it necessary to reprimand her for her self-indulgent neglect of her duties, a reprimand that would fall on deaf ears in the wake of subsequent events. That autumn, more devastating news reached the palace. Albert's close cousins, King Pedro and Prince Ferdinand of Portugal, died of typhoid. And barely had Albert recovered from the shock when he received a distressing letter from Baron Stockmar. The previous summer, during his university holidays, Bertie, the Prince of Wales, had been attached to a company of soldiers stationed in Ireland. While there, his fellow officers had introduced him to an actress, Nellie Clifton, who spent the night in his rooms. Prince Albert was horrified, and at the first opportunity hurried to Cambridge to speak with his son. The weather was horrendous, rainy and cold, and by the time Albert returned to Windsor, it was clear that his health was failing rapidly. Although he continued to carry out his numerous duties, even managing to avert a possible war with America in the wake of the Trent affair, Albert was dying. By the beginning of December, he was confined to bed, suffering from a high fever and diagnosed with typhoid. By the 11th of the month, bulletins were issued warning of the seriousness of his condition. Three days later, on the 14th of December, 1861, Prince Albert died, surrounded by his family, at the age of only 42. I stood up. Kissing his dear heavenly forehead, Queen Victoria wrote later, and called out in a bitter, agonising cry, Oh, my dear darling, and then dropped on my knees in mute, distracted despair, unable to utter a single word or shed a tear.